Ah. Yeah. My, my previous one was an OC I had. My, my I previous still one... don't understand how people could think that Dunsparce should have evolved into Drampa. Like, the two have nothing alike. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I don't see it here. <laughs> yeah, like, sure, they're both serpentine-like things. But one is clearly an like a, a western inspired dragon and then the other one is based on a Japanese yokai. Oh by the way Chris I ended up showing the uh I showed the video to Rio where you mentioned that you didn't think the dust bars looked like a snake and he brought up hognose snakes. <laughs> so you're just kind of narrow-minded when it came to what you said there. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Anyways, welcome back, folks. Last time we beat Kieran, next this time we're gonna explore the crater or some shit. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> most of us are still trying to wake up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I guess, let's see. Is there anything else we're gonna be doing before we do the crater or? Uh, oh, right. Uh, we were going to take on all the classes at Naranja Academy. Ah. Right. All right, so... Because know. doing that unlocks some stuff here. Right. So let's see. In the meantime, Millie and I could probably just go around and rack up EB points for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be going to class while you slowly feed me BB points. Wait, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I'm force-feeding you. Right. Uh, uh. Oh wow, you found a mass outbreak of quillfish. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a cross combination of like Owen Wilson and Peter Griffin. <laughs> the battle. Let's... Hey, Millie, could you replace your sour sandwich one with something else? Oh, replace it? Yeah. Alright, give me a second. Hmm. I guess we'll do the, uh... I'd home. recommend doing them by the one that's highest up. Oh, biology first? Yeah. yeah. Clean okay. victory in a pure battle. I guess that makes sense. Pure read battle. And I'll battle the wild terror Pokemon. <laughs> Let's see, where's the closest raid? Oh, hello, cool, hello. it's a six star. <laughs> <laughs> My name's this one. Jacques. My name's Jacques, and I'll be your Pokemon biology teacher. It's My like the. Uh, it, if you've seen Finding Nemo, it's the same name as the shrimp. Yeah, I know. I was just. I was listening to the conversation. <laughs> In my class, we'll all learn about the various quirks of our beloved Pokemon together. I hope you all come to love Pokemon even more from the things you learn here. In today's class, I'll teach you a great way to get to know Pokemon in more depth. If you'd like to become better friends with your Pokemon, <coughs> you can let... Excuse me? <laughs> you can let them come out of their ball Pokeballs and walk along with you. Sounds great, huh? You can use the ZR button to throw a Pokeball <coughs> to let out the Pokemon inside. Is this just an in-depth of tutorials? Uh, it's... This kind of... Some of the earlier classes really fit more with the early portion of the game. Alright. <laughs> Nothing cuter than watching your Pokemon run around 
underfoot, if you ask me. Or overhead, depending. <laughs> Once you let your Pokemon out, try speaking to them. They're sure to respond in some way. It's a great way to get to know them better. However, letting your Pokemon out of this ball isn't such a great idea in some locations. For example, if you're floating on a cloud. It's not exactly a brilliant ideal, especially with the Snorlax involved. <laughs> Forget Any? Snorlax, what about Groudon or Cosmoem? Uh, fair point. <laughs> They're heavier still. Yeah. <laughs> Can anyone tell me where it is that you shouldn't have your Pokemon walking along with you? Uh, a landmine? <laughs> uh, uh, a radioactive lake? Uh, a uh, garbage disposal facility? <laughs> um, maybe if you have a Grimer or a Trubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Inside buildings. That's right. Great job, Black Cross. I see you did your homework. The correct answer is that we should not walk with our Pokemon indoors. How about that? Meanwhile, in Black 2 and White 2. <laughs> uh, uh, counter response, apparently. There is, like, there's straight up a building in Humilao City where... A posh old lady wants you to walk around with her mean foo inside of a building. And you can't <laughs> yeah. leave said building. Oh, fun. <laughs> Some Pokemon might damage walls, desks, and other things walking around inside buildings. So, it's not allowed regardless of the species. But They're... I thought in Legends Arceus we discovered that Pokemon can change their size. <laughs> I'm sorry, I am just ripping this discussion a whole asshole out of its own. Oh gosh, something tells me you be the troubled child in this classroom. <laughs> uh, uh. No, I'd just be more like asking questions. Yeah. <laughs> Therefore, please only let your Pokemon out of their Pokeballs while outdoors. Okay, everyone? I think I see them out and about in classroom from time to time, but still. Anyway, you may become close, even closer friends with your Pokemon pals by walking together. Oh, I almost forgot. Keep in mind that you can only walk together with your lead Pokemon. Remember. Lead. Lead. It's Rem not a Pokemon made of lead. Right. <laughs> Remember, use the CR button to throw a, po a ball and let it out the Pokemon inside. You'll also want to remember that throwing a ball is at a wild Pokemon will start a battle. And if you throw it from behind on a wild Pokemon, it gives you another turn. <laughs> it, it looks a salty and spicy, Herbo. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, it looks like it's all the time we have for today. See you all next class. That's all the time we have for today, kids. So remember, God made you special, and he loves you very much. Uh. Hi, Sheep. Speaking of God. <laughs> oh. What happened? Oh, we were just... I was just improv something on the live stream. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are we live? Yeah. 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 Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello again. Good evening. Hello again. Good evening, Twitter. This is Eat That No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> I never heard of a show called Eat That No. <laughs> no, there's a um, user on Twitter called... Eat that. I'm going to say the clean version. Eat that cat. Oh. Four, four, five. <laughs> you you yeah. don't need to worry about the specifics. This is an this is a, an 18 plus stream for the most part, I think, right? Yeah. 
No need to worry about having to worry about sealing your lips on anything. If you're comfortable with saying it, go for it. With that and said, be man. careful. <laughs> with this thumb. <laughs> That's a Ratatouille yeah. reference. <laughs> I love Ratatouille. Yes. <laughs> That's my favorite line from it. You know, the... The movie I've been told is kind of a bit of a cautionary tale when it came to Pixar and its I think Pixar as a company because if I recall correctly there was like an entire subplot with the mat like the the owner of the restaurant having the former owner of the restaurant be made into a mascot for like tapping into other food types. And then that's yeah. apparently like an analogy for the many sequels. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> uh. Did you all try using the ZR button to let your Pokemon out as I taught you in our last class? Yes. Lots of you times. You have no idea, Jacques. <laughs> Walking along with your Pokemon lets you see how unique and cute they all are. I also highly recommend Picnus for when you want to spend some quality time together with them. You can get them all around the table to make sandwiches and play. It's really a lot of fun. A, lo a lot of fun. Wow. <laughs> if you want to learn more about making food, Mr... Nick, help me out here. How do you pronounce that? Sagiaro. Mr. Sagiaro's class in the best place to go. It's... The name, I think, also is that of a, a, of a plant that's edible. Oh, that would make sense, actually. Hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> now, sometimes while you're enjoying a picnic with your Pokemon... You may find something very, very important in the basket next to your table. This very important something is what Pokemon are born from. Let's all say it together. The womb. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I think it's been confirmed that Lugia gives life birth, so... Yeah. Oh gosh, that's oh, that's funny. <laughs> uh, eggs. <laughs> Phew, you all got it right. <laughs> For the second, I thought I had to push this from a rated E game to a rated T game, or even rated M. <laughs> oh my gosh, the highlight reel for this is going to be such a treasure trove. <laughs> <laughs> The very important something I'm talking about is a Pokemon egg. It's not clear where these eggs come from, but they're probably it's an placed in the basket. It's an game. I can't tell you how it got there. <laughs> it comes out of a Pokemon's bum. <laughs> what if the Pokemon doesn't have an aft end? Like Magnemite. You don't want to know where that comes from. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh. Are you having fun? Uh either that or my mind hasn't quite alerted yet to which where everything is funny right now. <laughs> <laughs> which could also equal to bad chemistry on that part. We all know how that but works. But we're in biology right now. Chemistry, biology, it's all fake science in this world. <laughs> <laughs> Walking around with an egg will help warm it, watch, which allows this to hatch. Eggs won't warm up by sitting in boxes, though. You need to have them in your party. And here's one more super important thing I like you to remember about eggs. Pokemon entrust us with their eggs because they believe in us. So I'm... So, I sure would be happy to see you all 
being responsible parents for your little Pokemon, Pokemon eggs. Ugh. Whoops. My most important point came right as the bell rang. Well, see you all next time, I guess. <laughs> Just watch out for the ditto. <laughs> 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 I'm still thinking about that comic that says, "Who, who are you?" The little Pokemon is saying that, and is like, "I'm whoever you want to be, honey." <laughs> <laughs> Why was I picturing that scene, but to like the, like the very beginning of Larry Boy and the Rumor Weed? <laughs> I was watching some um, VeggieTales YouTube poops recently, and they're really funny. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> hello, but hello yeah, I, again. I'm just, I'm just picturing, like, the, the, the one who says, who are you, is the Milk Money Bandit, and then Ditto's Larry Boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like, well, I, I am anything you want me to be, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I am that hero! That is actually really good. That is a good impersonation. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I seem to remember... That's not the only one I could do after all. <laughs> uh, I seem to remember teaching you all about the importance of eggs in our last class together. On that note, is everyone using their Pokedex? Shock, we showed you ours how many episodes ago? <laughs> uh, loads of times, loads of times. It registered Pokemon born from eggs as well as those encountered via other messes. So don't you worry about that. And, uh, <laughs> just so you know, I'm the one who developed the Pokedex app. Yes, we know. We've heard it like five times throughout this entire yeah, playthrough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way to gloat. <laughs> <laughs> it was way before I started teaching here at the Academy, though. Back then, I was a researcher. And we writ them in tomes rather than computer decks. <laughs> Wait, poems? Tomes. You know, those big giant stone slabs. Oh! I'm thinking back to whenever we first started this whole playthrough section where uh, 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 Director Cavell was like, I remember we wrote them oh, in Clavel. paper and pins. <laughs> and it's like, you're acting like as though as if we're in the Heeswing region again. <laughs> you know, uh, that, that reminds me. Um, the uh, On the topic of Heesui... Uh, are you familiar with that one meme of Spider-Man pointing at each other? Yeah. Well, somebody did that, but twofold. They replaced one Spider-Man head with Bulbasaur, one with Mew, one with Rhydon, and one with Arceus. Right. Because oh, yeah, all of them he was have... the first Pokemon. Yeah, because Rhydon was the first Pokemon ever created outside of the lore. Arceus is essentially Pokemon God, Mew has the DNA of every single Pokemon, making it the Ancestor, and Bulbasaur is the first Pokemon in the National Dex, and the Kanto Dex. Yeah, so... Somebody recently had to update that to include Rowlet, because it was the first Pokemon in the Hisui Dex, which, in lore, is the first Pokedex ever to be put to written scripture. Uh, I'm still, when you said Tom, I, I always think of the Book of Exodus as real <laughs> in Pokemon. <laughs> dun, dun, dun! <laughs> Although with that said, the, the fact that Kanto, like, Hisui just brings up a lot of issues with Pokemon evolutions because like okay Porygon I can somewhat understand because it came through the space time distortion but 
Where exactly were the evolutions to Onyx, Golbat, and Eevee in Kanto, if that's the case? Like, if they were already registered in the first Pokedex ever written, where were they in red and blue? Ooh, you make a good point. <laughs> and then there's the babies. Oh. Cleffa and, and Pichu weren't in Kanto either. Yeah, not until literally the um, second generation got put into place. And then Mime Jr. was introduced in Gen 4, along with Hapini. Uh, this raises a lot of and eyebrows. Elegant and Magby all came from Generation 2 as well, along with Blissey. Oh, God. And then there's all the Gen 4 evolutions to Gen 1 Pokemon, like Licky Licky, Rhyperior, Tangrowth, Magnezone. Oh, gosh, I can't wait until we get into history class. This is going to be one hell of a journey here <laughs> i feel like this is the second coming of the game grumps thing that we did over in the in the tag tree thicket oh no <laughs> That's been the, how long has that been since we did since you guys did that i think it's been about half a year oh gosh <laughs> Uh, Give or take a couple months, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, Director Caval wasn't working in education at the time either. He was researching alongside me at the same facility. We got to research Pokemon together day in and day out. Those so what you're sure saying is that the fun. two of you were study buddies. Yeah. That's, that's interesting to know, because it's like, uh... Age? I don't think age would matter because they were both adults. I guess. It just... Jacques looks like he's like in his late 20s. When you look at him. Even with the gray hair? It looked at purple in this angle. Well, some of it looks purple. For all I know, it could be some darker colors like maybe black but then again this is in the realm in which where dye color hair is natural color apparently so going back to that game grumps comparison uh between the two of us who would be aaron and who would be dan i guess that depends on the side subject like, like I, I forget exactly which answer you gave me the last time I forgot too. I don't remember. I feel like you would. I feel like Mac would be Aaron. <laughs> what? But I actually like Sonic. <laughs> uh, I can't say anything about that because I only like Sonic in like a uh, movie format, uh, and TV show format. But as for uh, the video games, I've only played, quote unquote, I've only played one actual game, and that was the original. Uh, record it was ported onto the uh, GBA at the time. Oh no, but... you got the cropped one. I am so sorry. To be fair though, it didn't seem crap to me. I just wasn't good at the game in all fairness. Because I remember... But my... like, okay, so in order for the Sonic the Hedgehog 1 to work on the Game Boy Advance, they had to crop the screen, yet there was still a bunch of stuff going on on it. Oh, okay. Huh, interesting. I do remember from whenever I borrowed it from a friend of mine, the farthest I got was like, uh, I believe it was World 5? Maybe? It was whatever, huh. it was whatever, wherever, uh, that, uh, what looked like, uh, a city, almost kind of like Las Vegas seems style, in a way. Oh, you got the Spring Yard Zone. Yeah. Yes, Las Vegas for the win! I live in <laughs> Las Vegas. It was, either, it was either a Spring Yard Zone or a Starlight Zone. Yeah, it's, it's one of the two things. I do remember it was like a city, metropolis, but then... It ends up like in this neon light district type thing, what feels like Las Vegas almost, thanks to all the freaking uh, pinball references and stuff like that. It's like, what is this? Yeah, Las that's Vegas or something? Yard. Okay, yes. I could, I can't remember what uh, 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 
stage that would be in technically, but I do remember I got somewhat in it, uh, pretty far in it and stuff like that before I got stuck. But I mostly remember Sonic from like the uh, regular TV show back in the day, The Adventure of Sonic. Mm, okay, I was yeah. gonna ask if you were talking about Adventures or Sat AM. Now nah, I was referring to uh, Adventures. I hadn't seen that one, but I remember the one that had Julia White playing Sonic. Yeah, like I remember that, and then. In terms of others, uh, I did watch, like, I want to say, like, the first season of Sonic X, but then kind of falled Ooh. out afterwards. Hot take? Chris isn't that annoying. I just don't like him. I don't see he's annoying. I just don't like him. <laughs> I didn't I didn't find him annoying. In fact, at the time that I stopped watching, I, I didn't find anything. I he's a lot better in the original subbed. But, like, at the same time, like, people can just learn to get over themselves a little. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot worse yeah. cases. <laughs> yeah, he made some bad choices, but he's still, he was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, like, how old is he? Like, seven? I think either that or he was, like, nine. I he was, like, he was, like, ten. That's usually the average age that they usually do whenever they pull kids into, like, uh, a cartoon type show type thing. They're usually like 10 or something. That seems like the average number, so that sounds about right. I mean, heck, Ash started at 10, so... And remains 10 for the remainder of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Which is weird. <laughs> yeah. I still remember being so bothered by that one episode. <laughs> and Which then, episode? Uh, you know, him versus a rich... When he went to the bat, when he went to the league the first time, but he ended up losing because you know several reasons. Even though it wasn't his fault, yeah, everyone <laughs> booed him and called him a bad trainer. Aww, this became less of us playing the game and more just commentary. <laughs> yeah, like uh. if I remember, he got he got held hostage by Team Rocket. If I remember, and most of his Pokemon were injured, so he had no time to heal him. <laughs> Uh, one last uh, uh, caveat in terms of that Sonic response. Uh, I do love the films. Like, the first and second one are my personal favorites. I, I love them. And I am so excited for the third one. I cannot wait for when that comes out. I believe they talked like it was going to be December of this year or next year. I can't remember. I think I heard hey, something. Uh, I need to swap controllers. There's something going on with this one. Oh, dear. Like, I'm like. still able to play the game, it's just... Yeah. I can't zoom out. Huh. Like, I just... I seem to have lost the ability to zoom out my camera. Mm. That's not good. <laughs> uh, maybe Shock can explain us how to do that. <laughs> uh... uh. Yeah, I let's, got. Let's let him talk. <laughs> I got yelled at all the time, though. <laughs> Wait a second. How did I get into this? Pretty sure I was talking about the Pokedex, and we were talking about Sonic just a second ago. <laughs> Among other things. Anyway, today I like to teach you about catching Pokemon. As you all know, a great way to catch a Pokemon more easily is to first lower his HP. As we have discovered many times, that isn't always the case. But there is another way to up your chances of a successful catch. Can you guess what it is? The first option is a reference to Pokemon Go. Oh, uh, with the berry? Huh. Inflict the Pokemon with a status condition is the second option that I usually remember of. Either from either paralysis or sleep, uh... That's right, Black Cross. Great job. The correct technique for making Pokemon easier to catch is to inflict them with a status condition. Sleep is an especially effective status condition. It makes Pokemon drastically easier to catch. 
you have a Pokemon that can use moves that put opponents to sleep, like Sleep Powder or Hypnosis. Or Spore. <laughs> that too. Filling up your Pokedex will be a cinch. There are other ways to improve your catch rate as well, like using Pokeballs specific designs to be effective against certain Pokemon. Eating Bullshit, food that... this game does not have any of the multipliers coded properly. Yeah. <laughs> Eating food that gives you catching power works too. Or sneaking up on a Pokemon from behind to catch them by surprise when you start a battle. Seriously, how have we gone nearly two years of this game being out and they still haven't fixed the multiplier glitch? <laughs> If you have, if you're having trouble, you may want to make the rounds of the gyms and get gym badges. Earning gym badges will make it easier to catch Pokemon of higher and higher levels. Please do, cause, please do come you. show me your Pokedex once they start to fill up. Another day, another enjoyable class. Oh yeah, don't forget, our next class will be a test. Will there be a Sonic reference in the test? <laughs> no. Not Chris Chan. <laughs> oh, gosh. Hello, hello, everyone. Today is the midterm exam. It sure feels good to fill in all those empty spaces in the answer sheet, doesn't it? Take your time and contemplate each question carefully. That would be B. Let's get this over with so I can contemplate when my life went wrong. <laughs> uh. Combine one letter and one number below to correctly say when and where eggs are found. Oh, okay. I was confused. I was like, what the fuck? Is this an algebra question? <laughs> uh, that was a new way of being able to put the answer question saying into a problem. <laughs> well, uh, new to you. Yeah. <laughs> Which of the following is the effective way to warm up Walking around. What will not make Pokemon easier to catch? Giving them a berry. Inflicting with uh, poison is probably one of them, isn't it? It's a status condition. <laughs> yeah, but... Oh, well. Uh, it, it just... Poison is, is... Like, out of all the status condition, poison isn't that effective when you think about it. You know? I mean, it's effective, but you're effectively on a time bomb. Yeah. It, it's like... <clears throat> it's going to be dead if it ain't caught in the next few catches. <laughs> uh, this question won't affect your grade. How do you like the Pokedex? Is it easier to use? It's Easy right. enough. Alright everyone, time's up. I hope you all enjoyed tackling those questions. Uh, that last question. Me. <laughs> that last question was just something I'm personally curious to know. Don't tell the director about it, okay? I'll grade, <laughs> I'll grade these right away. I hope you're all looking forward to seeing how you did. Uh. There was a long silence. <laughs> uh. mm. 
All right. Hello, hello, back again. Excuse me. <laughs> I, am, I am so sorry, Jacques. <laughs> you all did really well with the midterm exam. Thanks for answering my little question at the end, too. I'll be sure to keep your responses as mine. Alright, we're now heading into the last half of our classes together. It's time for your... It's time for our knowledge to evolve and grow, just like our Pokemon. Evolution, yep. <laughs> Evolution. Today, we're going to learn about the fascinating phenomenon of Pokemon Evolution. As your Pokemon battle and level up, they learn moves and get stronger. And for some Pokemon, once they've leveled up enough, their appearance change and their stats increase, sometimes by a lot. That's Pokemon Evolution. It's less actual evolution and more so like a metamorphosis. Yeah. <laughs> Pokemon become very strong when they evolve, making them trusty partners in battle. But some people prefer to keep their Pokemon in their adorable pre-evolved states. To do this, you just need to remember a certain button when your Pokemon begins to evolve. Say it with me if you already know, to cancel evolution, press the B button. Or just give your Pokemon an Everstone. That is also true. <laughs> That's right, everyone. B for best answer. <laughs> the button you want when you need to stop a Pokemon from evolving is the B button. If you press this button soon after a Pokemon begins to evolve, you can stop it from changing. You can also let the Pokemon hold an item known as an Everstone to keep it from evolving. And keep in mind that the requirements for evolution differ from Pokemon to Pokemon. Some may evolve by having a certain item, such as a Firestone or a Thunderstone used on them. Others may have, a, may have to learn a Pacific move or defeat a Pacific Pokemon in battle to evolve. Those are the tricky ones. <laughs> The way I mean, prime... it can't be like Inkay and where it can only level up and evolve into Malamar if you have the Pokemon game in your system undocked and not connected to a pro controller. Who, Lord Almighty, those specifics. While holding it upside down. Yeah, that's, uh, oh, gosh. Uh, the way Primate evolves into Annihilate is especially strange. You see, there's a certain move that... <laughs> Whoops, sorry, looks like we're out of time. I guess we'll have to end the class there today. Thank you all for your attention. Well, wait, wait, wait! I still want to know how to evolve Annihilate! <laughs> uh. I mean, lucky for you, I helped you out with that. Yeah. Although still, that was quite an interesting way to evolve it. Hello, hello again. But before we get going, do you all remember the final question from our midterm exam? Well, Director Cavell found out about it and somehow... I got yelled at. Whoops. Not saying that you're responsible for this as the party in question, but I'm saying I have my suspicions. <laughs> Apparently he could tell I was hiding something just by looking at me. He must have noticed all the color flush right out of my face. <laughs> Speaking of color, today I like to teach you about colors as a pertain to Pokemon. Colors weave into a spire of flame. <laughs> Some Pokemon have slightly different coloration or patterns on their bodies based on their gender or individual differences. 
In very rare cases, a Pokemon may have wildly different coloration compared to others of the same species. We call these specimens shiny Pokemon. Oh, it's fun fact! Uh, the term shiny was originally a fan term, but they officially adopted it around the time Black and White were making the rounds. Really? Huh. Yeah, it wasn't until around the 2010s that they started referring to them as that officially. I figured they started it as soon as it kind of started to show up, which was like... I feel like... No, they prior to that, they were just called visually different colored Pokemon. <laughs> visually different? How Pacific. Uh, yeah. Shiny just seems less of a mouthful, and it's more descriptive of what happens when you send them out of the Pokeball. Yeah. It is quite rare to come, uh, rare to cross paths with. with ugh, you do your word choice at at pausing. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Does yes, it... it's difficult to come. <laughs> Does anyone here know <laughs> what the likelihood of finding a shiny Pokemon is? Oh wow. One in four thousand. Wow, that's right. You may have the makings of a Pokemon Professor, Black Cross. Shiny Pokemon appear at a rate of 1 in 4,000. Isn't that amazing? Meanwhile, you got me on on January 1st to manage to get six of them in one day. Four of them <laughs> appearing back to back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gosh, that is funny. That, that was one of those times where it would just... Yeah, 1 in 4,000. How about we scratch that into 1 in 4? <laughs> uh, uh, I'd say it'd be like more like 1 in 400 at least. And I think the craziest bit about all of it was like I, did, I didn't even have any sandwiches going on. So I didn't have any, any, any increased shiny odds apart from the charm. Yeah, that's the crazy part. <laughs> the probability of encountering one in the wild is the same as hatching one from an egg, too. Eggs from I a pair- I have never bred any from an egg either, though. Yeah, I've tried that and it didn't work quite as easily. Eggs from a oh, pair- Oh, did you also- did you also try the, uh, the Basuda method? Uh, which one's that? Uh, um, getting a Pokemon from a different, re uh, different uh, region. Yeah, one from a different nationality. Yeah. No, I don't think it's I like had. Yeah, it's like increases your chances. Like if you get like a Ditto from a different nationality, you might have a higher chance. Oh, I think Mech mentioned that some time ago. Yeah. Okay. Combine that with a Pokemon with either magma armor or flame body, and the eggs will be able to hatch faster. Yeah. I still need to hunt the other two uh, starters, and then I hunt the rest of the starters. <laughs> eggs from Thank a pair you. of... <laughs> I am so sorry we keep interrupting you. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, uh, eggs from a pair of Pokemon... Okay. <laughs> eggs from a pair of Pokemon raised around different languages are a special case. There is a higher than average chance that a shiny Pokemon will hatch from these eggs. But we haven't uh, we been beat able to right to the punch. <laughs> but we haven't been able to figure out why that is just yet. Translation, that's Pokemon Company saying we have no idea why, but it does. <laughs> I've also heard rumors of a charm that increases your likelihood of finding shiny Pokemon when you have it in your bag. Can you believe that? This claim can't be scientifically verified, but it sure would be fun if it were true. Uh. Whoops, there's a bell. And that's it for today. Damn it, now I'm just reminded of the the time that I was really sleepy and was reading Horsey's Pokedex entry. 
Oh no. It's like, it's like the dragon Pokemon. <laughs> oh gosh. Hello, gosh. What was all that? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I was trying to say hello, hello again, like usual, and then it came out hero, hero, hero. <laughs> so what you're saying is, is that your tongue slipped on its dick? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Gosh. Whew. Next time we meet, we'll have our final exam. That means today is our last actual class. And the topic for this class will be Pokemon Forms. Bro has ascended. Are you good? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you can just think of the forms as the shapes and, and or appearances that Pokemon have. There's also a phenomenon called a form change where a Pokemon appearance changes under certain conditions. Cyclosaur, for example, which we regularly ride on as transportation here in Paldea, has three forms. First is the basic form, where it walks on four legs. Second is the battle form, where it stands on its hind legs to engage in battle. Finally, there's its ride form, where it inflates its throat sack and its tail so we can ride on the back. Help, Does whoa. it mean, mean that it just puts its tail up its own ass? That's... I've... Now that I realize that, I now have even more questions that has to be asked now. So, to know that the throat sack is the will portion, how the frick does that work? <laughs> like, uh... that, that really scares my throat, thinking that it goes around in a circle so loosely all of a sudden, and it's like, oh, oh. Okay, it's, it's just shaped like a wheel. But it it's doesn't go... It's not like Miraidon, go... where it just ends up having the... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> what were you going to say? I, I was going to say that the fact that the th that the throat thing doesn't go round and round, then why does it form in what looks like a wheel? <laughs> and let's not talk about the tail. I think that one right there is another scary story that I don't think I want to hear. The tail, I think it just kind of curls up. Yeah, but at the same time, too... The fact that it curls up, does that mean that it goes around in a circle as well? And how the hell does that... It's kind of like a... It's kind of like the spiral of a shell. Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah. Oh, exactly. A shell? Yeah, you, 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 you've seen the ones that snails have, right? Oh, okay. The tails or whatnot. Huh. That makes a Well... As for the throat sack thing, it's, I think that's more so in reference to how some real-life lizards have, like, a little flap along the lower half of their body that they flare up for intimidation or maybe even for attracting mates. Right. Or a frog. <laughs> you know, their throat things. Oh, right. But that that's more spherical than it is cylindrical. Again, it's one of those things, knowing that the throw sack and the tail is how it forms the wheel and stuff like that Qu makes me question all of my senses of like how body parts work and stuff and it makes me go oh, 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 oh. <laughs> at least he doesn't like you at least they don't he doesn't use it as wheels 
Chris, it's at this moment you realize we are in the biology class. <laughs> the one instance where it is actually biology <laughs> and not just the tutorial. <laughs> But he runs on all fours and does needles wheels, or else I would be concerned. <laughs> oh god. Though we can use something you're all carrying with you now as an even better example. Yep, I'm talking about your phones. Some smartphones are inhabited by a certain Pokemon. Does anyone know the Pokemon I'm referring to? A Rotom. You're a regular expert on Pokemon and technology, aren't you, Black Cross? You know, now that I have to come to think of it, here's a question that I'm really curious on. What company decided to imprison a Pokemon into a cell phone? And how? Well, here's the thing. Rotom is meant to be a poltergeist. Right. Or, that I guess in this case, since it's electric, a boltergeist. Right. I guess it just saw a phone just like, ooh, let me have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ooh, a tiny electronic device. Zap! Get sucked right into it. <laughs> and here's the thing. It's... The current Broton phones that we have now were... I believe they were partially inspired by the... You haven't played Sun and Moon, but the entire Pokedex is powered by a Rotom. Yep. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember now. Yeah. I forgot about that. I just love, that one loves starting a conversation whenever we can. But again, at the same time too, I want to know the, po uh, the uh, company that decided that that was a functional ideal. And where they got that many of them. Why do I get the feeling that when you put this into the highlight reel, when we do a bunch of the discussions for stuff, you just take a page from what you did in the Kingdom Hearts 3 highlight reels when we were talking about Lilo and Stitch and you just have like a text saying like we just talked about X thing for a while and then in the background it's like IMAGINATION IMAGINATION <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be fair, that Pacific one, we talked for a how long? 15 minutes at least. Feels longer than that, I forgot. <laughs> uh, uh. The Pokemon inside your smartphone is Rotom, and it does all sorts of things to help you out. A Rotom inside a Rotom phone is special, so it doesn't try to enter other electronics. So it's permanently imprisoned. Okay. Or maybe it's just been trained to work on one specific electronic and not another, also high cell. <laughs> uh, an ordinary Rotom, however, can change form by entering washing machines, micro wave ovens, and other electronic appliances. And by other, you only mean like three. <laughs> Rotom a fan, a lawnmower, and a freezer. Yep. <laughs> okay, I, I need to bring this up. Let me just find it again. Oh dear. Because, <laughs> God, does this really bother me? With oh, no Rotom? Way. <laughs> Let me just find the image again. Oh boy. Here we go. Uh. Okay, so if you look at the uh, if you look at the voice chat stuff, this is the size for the appliances that Rotom is able to enter into, right? Yeah. Yeah. If I can find it. Pay attention to the size of that refrigerator. Okay. Because yeah. this is how big it is in the Pokedex image for Rotom in the Blueberry... For the Blueberry Academy decks. Like, what the yeah. fuck? 
Don't remind me. You shrunk. So like, yeah, because we're just confusing. It was like, how did he shrink that whole thing? Because <laughs> like, you're supposed to control it, not like shrink it. Huh. Like, there are certain Pokemon that... I mean, there's certain Pokemon that should not have had if, had sizes affect them. Rotom's forms, I wholeheartedly feel, should have been one of those. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I looked at the Jumbo one, the Jumbo's even barely near that size either. <laughs> the Alpha's barely the size of a regular refrigerator. It's almost on par with, like, a little kitchenette. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Rotom is a bit of an exception, though. No kidding! <laughs> uh, many Pokemon that change form do so simply by holding an item or by having one use on them. How do you pronounce that one? Oracorio. Oracorio, for example, has four different forms it can change between when given certain nectars. Pokemon may even change types or learn different moves when they change forms. Form change are different from evolution in that the Pokemon can return to its original form. And unlike shiny Pokemon, which can't change their special co coloration, the same individual Pokemon can go back and forth between. There's a lot to dig into with this form change phenomenon, as you can see. Do, 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 do. <laughs> we have come for your next. We can all learn something from Pokemon here, don't you think? Bit of a trash. I know that you were but... trying to say nectar, Millie, but it cut off so it sounds like you said, We have come for your neck. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I guess we're choosing violence then. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to see you all enjoy your time at the Academy to the fullest and change form into a new version of yourselves. Or something like that anyway. Oh, I almost forgot. Regional forms, which vary based on what region a Pokemon came from, don't change like other forms. They're an into they're innate. Whoops, there's a bell. I guess I was scatterbrained. Mr. Chuck right up to the very end, huh? Had a great time teaching all of you. I hope you'll do your best in the final exam. All right, exam time. Oh, fun fact. Uh, the Pokemon that is right next to the receptionist lady will dictate what time of day it is in the academy. Like, it will tell you what what day, what time of day it is. Yeah, Gengar's like, for the be... night and Psyduck was for the day, wasn't it? Yeah. Exactly. That's what I thought. I think we had that discussion where I remember seeing the Gengar ones... And then I saw, only saw a Psyduck for a while, and I was like, what happened to the Gengar? And you're like, it was based on the time, and it's like, oh, okay. Also, I feel, uh, it might just be a me thing, but I think the Gengar being there kind of reminds me of, uh, it, it might be a reference to Ashes, because he caught his Gengar at uh, the Sakuragi Institute. Which is a, like a, I want to say it was like a university of sorts in the Kanto region. Viridian City to be exactly. And the, and the uh, building that, before it became the Sakuragi Institute, a Pokemon trainer left a Gengar there telling it that it would come back. And it was, it stuck around there for years, dealing with a, until it realized that it had a, been abandoned and just stuck around until Ash just decided to be like, hey, I, I want to make you feel better. And then Gengar just decided to join the team after that. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. 
Ash mm. loves taking care of abandoned Pokemon. Ash has a really interesting history of doing that. Yeah, I believe the first time was with uh, Charmander. Charmander. Yeah, and then two other instances in between Charizard and Gengar, which was uh, Chimchar in Diamond and Pearl and Tepig in Black and White. Right. Today is our final exam. It will cover everything I've taught you so far, but I'm sure you all will do just fine. Take your time and contemp content contemplate. Con contemplate each question carefully. Alright, how many of the following four methods make it easier to catch a Pokemon? Let's see. Uh, oh. Two. <laughs> I was like, oh, what, what, what? And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh. we have, did I realize we have the reverse where Froakie just abandoned his trainers instead? <laughs> uh, true or false? You can get new Pokemon only by catching them yourselves or trading with other. That is false. If a Pokemon is holding an Everstone, we'll uh, use in an item that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if a Pokemon is holding an Everstone, eh. <laughs> uh, uh, if a Pokemon is holding an Everstone, we'll use an, an item that induce evolutions such as a Firestone cause it to evolve. Ooh, that's an interesting question, actually. I believe so, because Everstone only affects level up and trading. Okay. Unless you're Kadabra. Ah, okay. I ain't for I, I, I haven't forgotten that one trainer from Blue And what are the uh, uh, chances of running to a shiny Pokemon? One in 4,000. True or false? The Pokemon known as Oricorio or 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 has three forms. False. Think of it like... Okay, it's not what the name derives from. Well, one of the words anyway, but... Think Oreo and then Choreography. Oh, okay. Here we go. Being based on dance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have anything you would like to say about my class? I'm still getting used to this teaching thing, but I sure had fun as your teacher. Okay. Thank you for being our teacher. <laughs> okay, time's up. Whether you like it or not, I hope everyone enjoyed tackling those questions. <laughs> I snuck in a little bonus question there right at the end again. Shh, our little secret. Don't tell the director. Please, for the love of God, please don't tell him. <laughs> I'll grade these right away. I hope you all looking forward to seeing how you did. By the way, Millie, you never answered my question about what your profile pick is. Oh, I did. <laughs> I was talking about the game profile pick. Oh, the Mew? <laughs> oh. Yeah, See, about to I say, that's that a shiny like a, Mew. I thought yeah. that was like a really odd colored Diglett. <laughs> it was just a Mew, just like, I think it's like really close. I was like, yo, I'm gonna take a picture. Okay. Hmm. Of course, Chris would have some history involving Diglett. Yeah, I'm about to say, all of a sudden, I feel a deja vu of what we had a couple of weeks ago happen just then and there. Hey, in my defense, I was mixing up the looks. You were mixing up the name. That is fair, too. That Very fair. Again, I only read and saw DTT, which made me indicate thinking that it was a Diglett rather than a Ditto. Not realizing yeah, it said Ditto. T and a G. Yeah, no, it's one of those things where, at the time, my mind wasn't fully active. Then again, that day, my mind wasn't active You were just at all. having a massive brain fart. Oh, look, speaking of ditto. <laughs> Time to go find some in the pooler bundle. Uh, <laughs> uh. Jacques asked us to reward you with this. Take it. <laughs> Uh, I guess the next thing is going to be math, huh? 
Oh, fun fact, uh, I, I don't know if you remember this or not, but uh, the, the teacher for this class happens to be... The sister the for sister. Uh, Rhyme. Yeah. I think I remember that, because when we saw her first time, I was like, who's she? <laughs> first time. Funny. <laughs> uh, so who voiced it as Miss Thyme? That was you. Okay, so back to me again. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. My Hi. name's Sai, and I will be your math teacher. Hello. Sorry, <laughs> sorry to put Hello. you. <laughs> Is it me you're looking for? <laughs> oh gosh. Sorry to put you all on the spot at the start of class, but let me ask you a quick question. Do you enjoy numbers? As Moretti, as as. Arithmetic and the like. Do you like numbers? Yeah, we like numbers. Do you like fractions? Yeah, we love fractions. Do you like decimals? Yeah, we like decimals. Do 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 do. Get ready to get a mouthful. <laughs> so yes, I like numbers, even your phone number, actually, don't you? <laughs> Including your IP address. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for your honest response. Some of you may like numbers, and some may not. I think that makes a wonderful mix. But no matter your opinion on math, I hope you find yourselves enjoying our lesson together. I'll do my best to find a good way to match up your interests with all types of math lessons. Speaking of which, are you all caught up on your studies of Pokemon type matchups? For example... You aren't. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, no need to drill any harder than it has been. It's already went through the frickin' sheetrock. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Electric's weak to fighting. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> For example, grass is strong against water, and water is strong against... Oh, uh, phew. Oh, my brain was like, wait, what? And it's like, no, wait, wait, she's right, she's right. Hold on, hold on, don't, don't. Ah, uh, she's right, she's right. Uh, I, I, <laughs> okay, was a, I, I was about to lose my shit here, and it's like, no, wait, 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 she's right, she's right, she's right. Uh, we talked about this literally the first episode of this. Freaking, whenever she picked uh, uh, Quaxley, and I picked... Uh, uh, Spretikita, and I was like, "Wait, why did she pick That's water?" Not what I said. Spretikita, sprig. Say sprig. Sprig. Got. Got. E. E. To. To. Sprig got the to. Okay. You, uh, you, you just okay. Have, okay. Do you know? Do you know? Cat in Spanish. It's just small little. Sprig of cat. Kid Sprig of Tito. Sprig got Tito. No, none of that. I mean, if it helps him to remember, then I'm not opposed. I uh, am. <laughs> either way, back to the last son. Uh, Black Cross, you seem to be good with Pokemon, so let me ask you this. Bearing in mind that water is strong against fire, with the move Water Gun hits a fire type Pokemon, what becomes of the move's damage? It doubles. It's doubled. That's right. I knew I could count on you for this question, Black Cross. I don't know if she mentions this or not, but if you use that Pokemon move Water Gun on a Pokemon that, like, Say, for instance, if that fire type was also either ground or rock type, it would have been quadruple damage. Oh. And also, and also, it, also, you can't forget same type attack bonus, but I'm not sure if she goes into that. Hmm. Mm, yeah. Using moves of a type that anyway. your opponent is weak is a super effective tactic. It multiplies the damage of those moves by two. 
On the other hand, using moves of a type that your opponent is resist to isn't very effective. It divides the damage to your moves by two. <laughs> I don't mean to encroach on Miss Dendra. De Dendra battle uh, oh gosh battle study territory <laughs> of course but i thought it best to use a lively topic as an example that can make math fun even for those of you who don't much like the subject don't you think oh my is that the bell i suppose that's all for now what a shame I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next class. I hope you're looking forward to it, too. Would you say that between the teacher's in-game and me, that the, the that you're learning a lot? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> you're going to learn, damn it, whether you want to or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I may learn it, but I can't guarantee it'll stick. <laughs> Learning's half the battle, the other half's remembering. Bingo. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone, again. Tell me. I wonder if there's a memory class. That would be an interesting idea. Tell me. Do you all enjoy shopping, buying, taste, buying tasty bread, or choosing new clothes? Even just window shopping is so much fun. Dancing, walking, rearranging furniture. <laughs> Chris is shopping. I let Grover out of the cage. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You seriously had never heard that meme? No. I certainly hadn't heard of it until now, and you just pulled me and Grover into the subject. Hang on. No. I'm talking about this one. Dancing, walking, rearranging furniture. Okay, I hadn't heard that one. Which one's that from? I don't know. <laughs> If I had to make an educated guess, it was probably American Dad. Oh, well, that would explain it, because I don't really... It's Family Guy. It was, it was like a Lois's dad. Close enough. They're made by the same guy. Oh. Ah. Uh, in today's class, I like to use shopping, one of my own favorite hobbies, mind you, to teach you all about math. I'm sure everyone here is has visited a Pokemon at least once. They sell all sorts of Pokemon items. Pokeballs are one of the many useful items you can find there. They cost 200p each. Now then, I'd like you all to do some thinking with me here. One Pokeball is 200. If you had 2,000 and bought as many Pokeballs as you could afford, how many would you receive? Ten. I had a voice crack, I am sorry. Oh dear. No, I'm you get a premier ball too. Chris yeah, you're right. The screen like... Oh yeah, you sorry. get uh you get a premier ball for every ten that you purchase. I can't believe I forgot that part. Wow. It's like, as soon as you said that, I was like, wait, he's right again. He right, he right. Uh, she right. He right. Yeah. Sorry yeah. for misgendering you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no, it's all right. I don't care if people do it unintentionally. Anyway. It's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, I completely forgot that. Every 10 you do get a premiere ball. I don't know why I don't remember that. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Oh dear, I'm sorry, Black Cross. <laughs> I'm sorry, Black Cross. I suppose this was a bit of a trick question. Oh. <laughs> With 2,000, you can afford to purchase a maximum of 10 Pokeballs. 
However, if you purchase 10 or more in any one type of Pokeball, you will also receive one premium ball, a special Premier. white ball, as a bonus. So the correct answer is, in fact, 11. It sure is nice to get a little bonus like that on a shopping trip, isn't it? Oh my, is that the freaking bell again? That gummit, what a shame. Oh well, looking forward to the next class, y'all. <laughs> oh, <fuck. God. laughs> Chris, your Uncle Remus is showing. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why he's not kicking in. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, Lord. That's funny. Hello again, hey, Matt, everyone. Does, does Wish Cash come here and get a comment? That's all right. Uh, what? No, I was just asking Max something, but I'll uh, wait. Check your Pokedex? <laughs> I'm too lazy. <laughs> Let's just Chris. I'll find it. <laughs> Imagine putting effort into looking at what's setting up. Uh, oh, Lord. Whew. Uh, That's what things like Cerebi.net are for. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Tell me, do you all enjoy fortune telling, horoscopes, and the like? I think it feels great to read your horoscope and see that it says good luck is coming your way. So today... Well, I don't personally <laughs> believe in that sort of stuff. One person tried to Just read one of future. those. Oh, God. One person read my future when I was, like, not even a preteen. They said I would have had, like, two marriages, and neither one of them would have worked out. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. So today, i like to teach you all math while focusing on the topic of luck. Perhaps you have seen the following phrase, chop up, uh, crop, crop up, okay, crop up. Crop up during Poke Battle before a critical hit. When a Pokemon's attack lands as a critical hit, the damage it deals is increased by half. In other words, it does one and a half times as much damage as it normally would. Combine that with it being a super effective move on a Pokemon that is quad weak to it and the and... same type attack bonus. It insta kills it almost. Mac, Mac, let's not confuse him. Let's not confuse him. <laughs> hey, you're the one who brought up stab. <laughs> yeah. yeah so my point is, we're already overloading his brain. We don't need to make it explode. <laughs> uh, how do you know oh, it ain't already? I want, him, I want his head to look like spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mac. You're not going to pull our watermelon with a hammer. <laughs> I kid, I, I kid, okay? It is truly luck that determines whether your Pokemon lands a critical hit or has one landed on it. This can cause a great upset in battle. Does anyone know what percent chance a Pokemon has of landing a critical hit? Uh, 4%? Am I right? 4%? I, I don't remember. might actually be right. I think that is right. Yeah, that is correct. See. Well done, Black Cross. Yep. Wow. Okay. I was like, Lucky what? guess. One in twelve isn't correct. It I, I don't think it I was lucky because I don't think it, it's more common than one percent. But it's also it wouldn't be that common. I know higher crit ratio moves crit a lot more often. I, I feel like, like I feel like higher crit only works uh, in tangent if it's like a super effective move. You know what I mean? 
Like, I feel no? like if it's super effective, critical hit has a greater chance then, but if, if, if it's normal, nope. then it wouldn't work as well. But that's me thinking, so. I, nope. <laughs> Take it from the professionals. Nope. <laughs> uh, uh, I ain't no professor. I'm just reading the dialogue. <laughs> you can tell. Uh, <laughs> uh, the chance of landing a critical is said to be 1 in 24, which figures to roughly 4.17%. The odds are more favorable for certain moves, though. Why, moves such as Sh Stone Edge and Shadow Claw have about a 12% chance. Do they? Yeah, and then if you factor in Focus Energy or the new newly introduced Dragon Energy with the Dragon type, oh, it gets you mean spicy. Dragon or Cheer? Scope Lens. Oh, yeah, sorry, Dragon Cheer. Uh, and then there's also... Uh, Scope Lens and Razor Claw, which do the same thing. The League specifically for one Pokemon. Right. Okay. And and uh, I'm not. I'll wait till after she's done. Yep. Okay. But I'll wait till she's after, after she's done to t talk about something that's really interesting about crits. Okay. You can also use a move yep. called Focus Energy, or an item known as a Dare Hit. Dire. Oh, dire Hit. Dire. I was about to say, I believe that's dire, not dare. Why did I read it as that? Both raise a critical hit ratio by two stages. That's a 50% chance to land a critical hit. It feels great to land a critical hit, but perhaps not so great to be stuck by one. Or struck by one, rather. There is a surprising amount of mathematics probably... Pr uh, pro uh, pro uh, uh, probability. Probability hidden in Pokemon battles, you know. If you're able to do the calculations that'll swing luck in your favor, it may open the door for more strategy, strategic, uh, tra uh, gosh, strategic, strategic choices for you during battle. For crying out loud, that stupid bell! Would someone please just shoot it with a shotgun? <laughs> God dang it. Why am I so sassy with her? <laughs> now as you were saying, Cell. So. Uh, hold on. Uh, I'm trying to look at something. Uh, so, uh, focus energy actually, uh, 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 or not focus energy. Uh, Chris actually ignores stat drops, so if you just spam Draco Meteor with a high crit rate, after, like uh, on what people, the people people theorize that a Kinker is a really good abuser of it, if you spam Draco Meteor, which drops your special attack by two stages, if it has if it has a Pokemon that used Dragon Tear as his partner, because it's Dragon Tear works in double battles, and has a Scope Lens and Sniper. Which sniper increases the crit damage even more? Okay. It doesn't care about its stat drops because it just kills everything that isn't a fairy. And then it has flash cannon for fairy. Yeah, gum. So basically, yeah. There's a lot of factors when it comes to the stuff. I thought like it that. also had gunk shot. <laughs> uh, no, it does not. Uh. Well, I'm looking up somewhere. Really, with a nozzle like dragon. that, I'm surprised it doesn't. <laughs> it has Octazuka for some reason. Oh. Uh. Probably some sort of egg move or whatever. Yeah, it is. Well, for Octazuka at least. Uh, let me just. Look. Actually, come to think of it, it doesn't really make sense for it to have it in this game since Ramoray yeah. isn't in it. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Oh, I just realized Dragon Shear does the same thing as 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 uh, Focus Energy, except it only raises it by two stages, two stages of your Dragon type. But it works, so you free up a move slot on the Pokemon that wants the high crit. Right? Okay. Hmm. Also, too, do you that's smell bacon? No. <laughs> oh, that's my brain no, frying. Because, okay, uh, never mind. <laughs> uh, I was about to say, why are you asking us? None of us are in your room. 
And then you said your brain frying, so yeah, yeah, that tracks. Also, are you saying that you literally have pork for brains? <laughs> no, it's pork butt. <laughs> oh, so you're saying that his brain is likened to a rump roast? <laughs> oh, gosh. Probably. This entire stream has been nothing more than just a pure improv session. That's what that is. This isn't learning with Black Cross. This is improv with Black Cross. I'm not even doing no, this, improv. This, this I'm just having a Black discussion. Cross you laughs at it anyway. <laughs> we're just saying some random shit and laughing at it is what we're doing. <laughs> well, you are. Yeah, fair point. Fair point. Uh, all right, everyone. It's time to begin our midterm exam. I'm sure the fun experience you all had in my class will serve you as well as you answer. I might just be mixing this up with something else. I am completely okay with having this be the case, but for some reason, whenever I think of midterm, I just think of pregnancies. <laughs> okay! <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. Uh. It you doubles. do you, I guess. Yeah, it does double damage. How much damage does Razor Leave do when it is hit? That would be half damage. God, I really am the Chugga Conroy of this group. <laughs> Dang. Uh, I've learned my lesson I'm on this that answer. Also, uh, a lot of the stuff was cleared up with him, by the way. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, I'm saying I'm glad. <laughs> Me too. It would have been... Yeah. How much damage does a move deal when it lands a critical hit? It's like one and a one half, and half times. times. All right, everyone, time is up. Put your hands on your laps now. <laughs> time also, is here, up. Here's, here's some more information to fry your brain. It used to do two times the damage, so it crits used to be even more broken. <laughs> you that were... was like in Gen 5 or Gen 4, I think. Something like that. Oh, man. It... And then I Gen just... 6, it, Gen 6, it, should we mention the timer ball as well? Oh dear. What do I need to know about the timer ball? With the... In its original debut game, it was meant to increase the catch multiplier after 20 turns. Right. However, I think they increased it since. Could have fooled me. I'm pretty I, sure I that one that. time that I tried using a timer ball on, uh, what was that one legendary that we had trouble trying to catch it? Um, I'm pretty sure I threw two timer balls and neither one of them catch. And we battled it for who knows how long before it started oh, to it right now. struggle and it killed itself. So, oh, you're talking about I'm up now. Blue. Yeah. Like, I know I used at least yeah. two timer balls towards the end, thinking it would finally catch it, and it didn't. So it was like, yeah, could have fooled me about that. <laughs> okay, so, the multiple... No, Mac, it used to be a lot worse, but now it's actually better. It used That's to what be, I was trying uh, to say. Yeah, after ten turns, it maxes out so at four times the catch rate. Uh, at, at, oh, it at, caps at... At previous generations, okay. it was 30. Okay. Th Although, of course, it doesn't matter it in this 30. game because the multipliers don't work. Yeah. <laughs> Do they not? No, they don't. It's only if you haven't caught the Pokemon before. That's weird. <laughs> There's a reason why I have been saying that you only get it in a critical capture or you don't get it at all. Right. <laughs> uh, hmm. I wonder if that counts for, for things like like I, I remember I caught my uh uh my Chi Yu after I uh after I got it traded to me so I could complete the decks so then I could hunt for IVs later. Hmm. Thinking about that.
We passed the uh, uh, midterm exam, so that worked out well. Okay, so this still works in battles, but not outside of it. That is weird. And that would be what? My what? right analog outside stick. Outside of battles? Oh, okay. It wasn't letting me oh. zoom out the camera outside of battles, but it still lets me fix the camera in battles. That is odd. Uh, you have to click it in. That's what I was doing! <laughs> huh. Hello again, Weird. everyone. Well done on the midterm exams. Some of you earn perfect scores and others seem to have a bit of trouble. But I can tell that you all tried your best. I am quite pleased to say that every last one of you passed. I can only assume that this means you all come to love numbers. Stay sharp <laughs> and try your best for the rest of my classes too. Speaking of sh staying sharp, do you know how that word applies to Pokemon battles? That's right, it has to do with stat boosts. A Pokemon stack can rise and fall throughout the course of battle, correct? For example, if a Pokemon uses the move Work Up, its attack and special attack stats will rise by one stage each. And as you may know, <coughs> each time a Pokemon's attack or stat, uh, special attack rises on one stage, moves affected by that stat will deal 50% more damage. If the same Pokemon from our previous example were to use Work Up again, both its attack and special attacks will have risen by two stages total. This results in a 100% increase to damage dealt, making this move twice as strong. Sword Dance, on the other hand, boosts its attacks by two stages at once, allowing the Pokemon to deal double damage after just a single use. Yeah, I am clicking my right analog stick inward, and it's not changing the camera size. <laughs> and it, out of battle? Out of battle! <laughs> That's weird, because it does that for me. Oh. I'm thinking that there might be something wrong with this controller. Oh, wow. Probably. You yeah, I got another one that I have to my side. I could probably just check this. <laughs> Okay. Using Sword Dance twice would boost the Pokemon's attack stats by four stages. How much more damage then would this Pokemon deal? That would be. Wouldn't that be quadruple then? Or triple? Nope. Hold on. Triple. Four times. Yeah, triple. Okay. Oh, baby, a triple! <laughs> It's yeah, it's not quadruple because ever, like um, it, think about it like this: you, you add 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.5 to a times two, which means you get times three. Right. Yeah, I had to think for a second. And then at six stages, six stages it would be four times the damage. Right. Okay. Wow, that's great. You answered this difficult question with ease, Black Cross. Each stage that a Pokemon attack or special attack okay, yeah. stat. Is raised increase is damaged by 50%. So being raised four stages would result in a four times 50% or 200% increase. The base damage of a hold on. Okay, I tried a different controller. It's it's not doing that. I think maybe if I had to start my game, it worked. Yeah. Oh. Seems like it happened to me before. <laughs> Like, I was about to like, sneeze there for a second. Uh. You saying that you've had this issue too, Millie? Like I think before, like and then other issues, like my Pokemon wouldn't wouldn't run at all. Well, right now I can't get the camera to zoom out. Mm. I had trouble sneezing. It might depend on where you are. Where are you right now, Max? I'm in the terrarium, <laughs> the polar biome, to be precise. Uh. Okay, yeah, I, I don't know. Anyway, the base damage of a move is 100%, so adding 200%, that gives us 
In other words, the next move the Pokemon uses will deal triple damage. Type matchup, critical hit damage, and other factors all play into these calculations as well. So even a small boost must be taken serious. By the way, if a stat simply rose, that means it has gone up by one stage. If it rose sharply, that's two stages. And if it rose drastically, that's three stages. Just so you know, the X attack and X special attack items, which can only be used in battle, can be used to sharply boost those respective stats. Oh, is that dang bell again? Today's lesson was a little difficult, so be sure to review what you learned in order to stay sharp. It's I'll time to talk about what we learned today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh gosh. Oh Lord Almighty. Your your mind's literally just that of Psyduck right now. It's just like eh. Yep, literally right now. My mind's just like it is cooking to a point to where it is now black. And it won't be long before it will be undigestible. <laughs> Hello again, it's everyone. Black Cross, am I right? <laughs> Black Crisp. <laughs> Did you make sure to review last class material in order to stay sharp? Yeah. <laughs> I know it was a little difficult with all the talk of multiplications and percentages and the like, but today we'll be taking, we'll be taking, we'll be talking about percentages again to learn about probability. That may sound like we're going to have another difficult class, but did you know that all of you already deal with prob prob probability, probability on a regular basis? Pokemon move generally have a probability called accuracy, which determines the probability that they will hit. The accuracy of tackle is a hundred or a hundred percent. So if you were to use tackle a hundred times, you could expect it to hit all a hundred times. The move hypnosis, which puts Pokemon to sleep, has an accuracy of 60 or 60%. That means you can expect it to hit 60 times in a hundred uses. To put that another way, out of a hundred uses, you could expect it to be to miss 40 times. Many of the truly powerful moves often tend to have lower accuracy. So when you when you're deciding whether to go slow or steady with moves that are sure to hit, or hard and fast with stronger hits, less accurate moves, you're already studying probability. Let me see here. Perhaps Surf and Hydro Pump would be good examples for this discussion. Surf has a power of 90. The accuracy is 100, meaning you can expect it to hit every time. Hydro Pump accuracy is only 80%, but when it hits, its power is 110. This is a pituitary gland. He may be small, but he's got big plans. <laughs> so between Surf and Hydro Pump, which moves would you want to use yourself? Hmm. Personally, I'd probably pick Surf, but that's the situation all on its own. Depends on the situation. Yeah. Oh my. I see you've already considered various possibilities, Black Cross. I may have made it sound like there was a correct answer here, but there's not. You're free to use any move you wish. Even if it sucks. <laughs> even if it, you even if it doesn't work at all, for that matter. <laughs> Factors like PP or number of targets hit may make some moves more suited 
to certain situations. However, trading accuracy for power or vice versa is purely a matter of preference. This surf versus hydro pump debate has been ongoing for quite some time. Has it? I didn't think hydro pump was in generation one. I huh. thought that was like a generation two or three move. Interesting. Hmm. Chris, First... back me up. When I, Sal, back me up here on this. <laughs> what 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 move did? What? what generation did hydro pump debut? Uh, one. Oh. Okay. What generation do you think? I wasn't listening. I was thinking it was either two or three. Well, it, it couldn't be three, because I was familiar with Hydro Pump before then. So yeah, it had to have been Generation 1, actually. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Personally, I'm more invested in debating the Rock-type moves, Rock Slide, and Stone Edge. Let me tell you, I could get really worked up talking about those moves, but there goes that flipping bell. Next class will be the last of our time together. So show up a hundred percent. Uh, Lord Almighty, the time pumps. Uh, the t time pumps. <laughs> puns. Gosh. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Lord, my head. Ah. Uh. <laughs> mm. So, seeing that she's a rock specialist, would that mean that this is schoolhouse rock? <laughs> well, it ain't no school of rock, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh. Hello, everyone. I hope we can have fun once again today for our last class together. Last time we learned about probability using more accuracy as an example. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> probability is quite an interesting subject. Did you know that in a class with 40 students, there is a 90% chance that two of them will have the same birthday? This is true even despite the fact that there are over 300 days each year. Isn't that remarkable? But let's move on to today's topic before we get swept along with probability again. I've been teaching you all how to calculate damage in this class using examples like type matchups, critical hits, stat boosts, and the like. All of these variables are multiplied together to calculate damage dealt to an opponent. However, did you know that there is an even simpler way to increase the damage of your Pokemon move? All you have to do is have your Pokemon use a move it shares a type with. If a rock type Pokemon uses a rock type move, Stone Edge, the move's power base is 100 is multiplied by 1.5 to become 150. Ground and Rock may seem like similar types, but if a Ground-type Pokemon uses Stone Edge, the move's power will remain 100. Super effective moves and critical hits also add multipliers on this little num... Nu nu uh, blah, 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 blah. Numer numerical. Numerical increase. So it Also, this came to my mind when you mentioned multiplier. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. My name is Multiplier. <laughs> yes. It took multiplier. me a sec. It took me a sec to get that. That's a bite. So it most certainly must not be taken lightly. Let me ask you a question to see if you understand what I'm talking about here. Say you have a more, say you have a move with a hundred, uh, gosh, my brain. 
Say you have a move with a power of 100. If a Pokemon that shares the type of this move uses it and hits an opponent that it is weak to that type, what happens to that move's power? Oh, God. My head. Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, two, 200? Is, that, is it 200? I'm going to say 200. 200! Close. But a power of 200 would only take into account the double effect of using a move that is super effective against an opponent. First, using a move that shares a type with its user multiplies the move's base power of 100 by 1.5, making its power 150. The fact that the opponent is weak to the move type then doubles that power of 150 to 300. The original power of the move ends up being triple. Isn't that amazing? Uh, uh, uh. What's more, if a Pokemon trashalizes, oh no, we're entering in this territory now. And a Terra type matches one of the original types, then the bonus it gets for using a move of that same type increases from 1.5 to 2. This was also before the Stellar type was added. Oh, gosh. Of course, being able That's to... That's a whole other barrel of eels. Yeah. <laughs> of course, being able to use a lot of moves with different types is great as well. That's one way you can surprise your opponent. In the end, your own intake... Uh, in the end, your own innate characteristics are, are what what will, will really <laughs> let you shine the most. Okay, yeah. Uh, bear in mind that this is true for both humans and Pokemon. It sure would make me happy if you could take those words to heart. But I suppose I should really have shared this basic advice right from the, our first lesson. My apologies. And just like that, class is over. The last of our time together flew by in a blink of an eye. It was so much fun to be able to teach you all eager students about numbers. And I am so glad it's almost over. Next I class... would have made another time joke, but at this point I'd just be beating a dead mud stale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> Next class will be our fun final exam. Be sure to review the material well in preparation. Oh gosh, my head hurts. <laughs> Final exam time, yay! <laughs> this is literally your mood right now. Overall enthusiasm, overall enthusiasm, overall enthusiasm. Yeah! <laughs> uh, Alright, everyone, it's time to begin our final exam. I'm sure the fun experiences you all had in my class will serve you well as you answer. Oh, here we go. This is going to hurt. Okay, how many great balls could you purchase with 3,000 if each costs 600? Oh, God. Five. Oh. Six times. If I recall correctly, it's, uh, it's 30 divided by six is five. So it'd be five. Okay. Whew, how about to say, my head's going to hurt by the end of this. I used to be good at math, too. Could you believe that? I used to be good at math, and now my math skills is... Don't worry, I sometimes, I sometimes have to pull a calculator out for some of the bigger numbers. Yeah. If a water... How spoiled we are. Yeah, no kidding. If a water-type move with a power of 100 lands a critical hit... With a grass-type Pokemon, 
What will the move's power be? Uh, wait. Hold on. Grass is stronger than water, right? A water type move hits a grass type Pokemon, it would just be half. Okay. I had to think for a sec. I was like, wait a second, wait a second. It's like, yeah, okay. Under normal conditions, what percentage oh, chance uh, does Stone Edge have to land a critical hit? I, I remember when I mentioned the quad weakness thing in yeah. the first lesson? It goes both ways. So, in this case, the move would be, like, if the water type move ends up... If that grass type was also part electric, I think it would be 25% damage instead. Oh, okay. If a Pokemon uses a sword dance twice, that would be triple. Yeah, triple. Okay. A rock type Pokemon whose terror type is rock Tetris. <laughs> rock Tetris. Uh, what will the power of the rock type move be multiplied by? That would be. Let's see. If a rock type Pokemon uses. <laughs> yeah. I am sorry for all the yawning. That's okay. My brain's fried from all this mathica calculus. And me voice acting as two teachers at the same time and trying to think on top of it. Ugh, this is a challenge. I feel like my eyes will eventually develop like a lizard. It's like, bleh. Uh, all right, everyone. Time is up. Put your hands on your lap now. This test was the accumulation of all I taught you. And I'm sure you all did. Culmination, not cumulation. <laughs> oh gosh. Do go and ask for the score at the front desk. Oh boy. I'm afraid to ask what it looks like. This is actually the one time where I'm actually concerned of how it's going to score. Last couple times were relatively easy. This time my head actually was struggling. Oh gosh. Oh no! You have to take it over again. Oh my head! <laughs> All right. Let's see what I screwed up on then. Hang on, I'm, I'm gonna look up the answers for you. Yeah, thank you, because right now I, I'm, I'm having trouble thinking at this rate. Oh, dang. Because <laughs> my head hurts. Too much. <sighs> Too much math makes a black cross hurt. <laughs> uh, I make it sound like I'm some kind of deranged idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, mighty. This is the first one with five. Uh, Maybe five. He's a fake Pokeball. He doesn't say it. He doesn't say Pokeballs in general. I just want to make certain, just in case, if it was like one of those trick questions that I'm not familiar with. <laughs> okay. yeah, I feel like it'd be five, because like it's it's saying specifically great balls. It's not saying balls in general. Okay. Yeah. The math final answers. The final answer for the first question is five. I mentioned that. Right. Yeah. This one should be 75. Yeah, 75. Okay, 75. You know, it's a, it's a crit. 12%. Okay. 
Triple damage. Okay. Times two. Okay, here we go. I think what it was was that I got... We, when we thought... I think I screwed you up when I mentioned 50. Yeah, that's what it was. Because then afterwards you were thinking, contradicting yourself, and then you said 75, and I was or subtracting by 25, and it's like, oh dear. So, this time should be good. Ugh. There we go, 5 out of 5. Oh. Took us a second Didn't time know. to get through that. Oh boy. Ugh! Oh, Tell Lord. you what, uh, whichever teacher we go to next, I'll I'll be the one to read it. I know which one I'm gonna let. I'm I know exactly which one, and I know for a fact that it's the art <laughs> teacher, Mr. Hassel, or is it Hassel or Hansel? Yeah, it's Hassel. Okay. Uh, you were the one that voice acted him, so this one is your go. Oh, wow! I also did the battle studies, if you remember. Oh, yeah. Greetings! I am Hassel. I will be teaching this art class. It is a pleasure to meet you all. Now, let me be candid for one moment. That ditto in the background is just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that many of you will forget all that you learned in this class once you graduate. After all, you don't need even a basic understanding of artwork, much less a refined appreciation of beauty for most exams or jobs. So, is my class a waste of time for you then? I think not. At least, I certainly hope it isn't. Think for a moment, all of you. What is beauty anyway? What makes something beautiful? Uh, the eye, the eye of the beholder. Of Boulder. Interesting. Thank you, Black Cross. Oh, but Namon is in there too. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to suggest that there's a correct answer to my query. The important thing is that all of you take time to think about it. I think about why we might find beauty in a flower blooming on the side of the road, for example. Question why is the sky a different shade of blue than the ocean, or why the leaves change color? Ponder the windmills of Artisan and how they move. Contemplate the chilling bite of waters in Cascarafa. When you're not being pelted by sandstorms, that is. <laughs> I'm sure that you will find every little detail of your lives will seem more vivid, more impactful, if you just take the moment to stop and think. I certainly am that certain that you will stop and truly appreciate the little beauties of this world. It will help you pull through the days where your studies have you exhausted or when work has dampened your spirits. I can agree to those attestments. Ah, do pardon me for waxing philosophical. You need not to understand all that now. To put it simply, it is a true one that doesn't need art to survive, but certainly makes surviving much more enjoyable. It is in my hope that this class will add even a little bit of color in your lives. That's all the time we have for today. Till next time, we'll try more hands-on approach to appreciating beauty.
I almost did the VeggieTales outro again. <laughs> oh. There we go. Oh, by the way, the language ones, like, we've only ever seen the battle studies teacher, the math teacher, the art teacher, and the biology teacher. The other ones we could just pick who gets to voice them. Okay. Hello, class. It is I, Hassel, yet again. In our previous class, we discussed what beauty is, which might have been a little boring for you. So today, I thought we'd mix things up a little to pique your interest in art. Allow me to introduce our special guest. Ah, hello. Get your ball! This is Professor Gibble, an assistant lecturer for today. Now then, Professor Gibble, if you would be so kind as to rastalizing for us. Glam! Hey, Penny's there too! <laughs> As some of you may already know, a Pokemon can terrestrialize if you use a Terra Orb. Normally, Professor Gibble would have been a Dragon type. But by terrestrializing, it succeeded in changing its type. So, class, what type do these lovely glistening flowers above Professor Gibble's head represent? Grass type. Excellent, Black Cross. Full marks for you. These beautiful flowers blooming above Professor Gibble's head show that it is now, in fact, a grass type. The shape of the Terra Jewel above a Pokemon's head depends on the Pokemon's Terra type. To summarize, if an opponent's Pokemon terrestrializes during battle, Observe a Pokemon's Terra type jewel closely to see which type it has become. And choose effective moves more accordingly. It is my sincere hope that today's lecture will help you all achieve beautiful victories. The Terrasal phenomenon is indeed a fascinating and deep subject to discuss. That is it for today, class. Thank you, Professor Gibble, for your help. <laughs> well, <good. laughs> so rip. What are you doing? Oh, uh, my switch died. Oh. Oh well. See, this is why I have it on a charger. It wasn't a charger. I just never realized my end piece fell out. Fell the wall. I guess it's up to me now to try to find the remaining diddle block. Yeah, the one diddle block. I already found the other two. And I found a third. Only one is missing. How many do you have Hello, to find? Hello, class! Four. Oh, wow. That last one's gonna be tricky. Mm-hmm. It is I, Hassel, yet again! I have been told that my precious lecture about the terrestrial phenomenon has been very well received. Thank you all for your kind words. In fact, Miss Dendra specifically requested that I impart even more battle knowledge to you all. So, I have decided that today we will take another look at how a Pokemon can terrestrialize. Gim -gim ball! And of course, we have Professor Gibble here to help us. Now then, if you would be so kind as to terrestrialize for us again. 
Now what do we have here? Last class we saw a grass type terrestrialization. But this time, we have something of a different shape. No Arvin? <laughs> uh, the class just keep changing, doesn't it? <laughs> Observe a terra jewel resembling a snowflake. Its dendritic shape is stunning to behold. It's a chitty thing standing close to it. So, class, what terra type do you imagine this jewel might represent? With all the hints you give off, you make it sound as though as if you're trying to drill it into my head. Ice, ice, baby. <laughs> Excellent, Black Cross. Full marks for you. The reason there is a snowflake shining above Professor Gibble's head is as simple as this. It is now an ice type. And because Professor Gibble is currently the ice type, ice type moves would not be very effective against it. Keep in mind that they usually would deal quadruple damage to Gibble. Now here's some trivia about snowflakes. While they come in many different shapes, no two are alike. Basically is what he's saying. Ah, uh, okay. Just think of it. Snowflakes fall from the sky, taking similar shapes without anyone saying they must. Do you not feel the great mystery of nature? A beautiful enigma that we live in. Ah, this is a bit of a tangent, but Mr. Jacques' classes are also hexagonal, aren't they? I almost forgot to mention that you can change the Pokemon's Terra type at the Treasure Eatery. Located in Medali. Though I must say, the cook there is a little... prickly. You'll need to get on her good side, if you want to get her help. Now come prepared for next class, because it is time for your midterm examination. Thank you for today, Professor Gibble. Grab him! <laughs> In case you're wondering, that's kind of basically how Gibble sounds. It's just like, Gibble! 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 That's, oh. how, it, that, that's how it sounds in the anime. Okay. I do hope you are ready because it is time for your midterm exam. Focus and do your best. And begin! Alright, so let's see. What is the name of the gemstone that glows over a Pokemon? Jewel. Grass. Hexagon. Medali. <laughs> Eye of the Beholder. The Eye of the Beholder. Yeah. Time's up! That's it for today's test. Pencils down, please. I would rather not have students worry about passing or failing in my art class. But tests are tests after all. Anyway, good work, everyone. You can check your results at the front desk.
Hi, Gengar. <laughs> Since we're seeing Gengar at this point, would you say we're taking night classes? I wonder who they have taking classes during the night shift. I know I hadn't, so I have no idea what that would be like. Then again, after high like school... Who would be teaching during the night shift? I don't know. Ugh. I feel a sneeze coming on, but it's not one to sneeze out. It's quite That's a you. <laughs> Hello, class. It is I, Hassel, yet again. I am pleased to say that everybody did very well on the midterm exams. As a reward for all of your hard work, we have a special guest visiting us today. Now then, Brassy, please come in. Greetings. Oh, I couldn't remember who voiced to him. That's you. Okay. I am Brassius. I am an artist. And I focus exclusively on glass-type Pokémon for my work. Brassius here mainly creates three-dimensional pieces, such as statues and the like. One of his major works is the installation titled Surrendering Some Flora, found in Artisan. Many of you who challenged the Artisan Gym have no doubt familiarized yourselves with these sculptures. Yes, I do recognize some faces among your students. I hope you all understand how fortunate you are to be able to attend Haas's class. Old Haas is a man who saved me fr when I had lost all hope and given up on myself. But he never gave up on me. I do not exaggerate when I say that he is my mentor in life. It is precisely thanks to Haas that I was able to establish my current art style. Oh dear, Brassy. I've nothing against reminiscing about the old times, but today I hope you will guide class in a way you only can. Of course. Let's see. Ah, oh, why don't we discuss that Haas mansion surrounding... Uh, surrendering. Surrendering some flora. Can anyone here tell me what my mood was when I crafted this detached expression? I think it was happy as the correct answer. No, no, no. Completely and utterly wrong. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> But I made it's been a while since I've done this class, so I couldn't remember. Yeah. Incorrect buzzer. When I made that sculpture, I had surrendered all hope. I was prepared to give up everything. I had resolved to give up my life as an artist if that piece did not receive proper recognition. Mm. Hence the name Surrendering Some Flora. That's exactly it, Haas. When I started out as an artist, I experienced my many hardships. I even began deathly ill and fell into a slump that drove me to depression. I began worrying only about what would sell. I was concerned only with fame and fortune. But all of my pieces during this time had no depth. They all... They were all shallow trash. It was then that I met Haas. He helped me realize how pretty I was, how petty I was being. I'll spare you the details, but in the end, I was able to leave all that behind. And that is also when I crafted the sun floor. Remarkable. Even I did not know the full story until now. 
This kind of thing is hard to tell someone, especially when they are so close to you. Now, I don't doubt that you... Adolescents. Adolescents will often find your head crowded with worry. My advice to you is simple. Be honest with yourself and do whatever your heart desires. So long as you don't cause trouble, that is. That is all for me. I must admit I am beginning to feel a bit embarrassed, so I bid you farewell, Haas. And farewell to your pupils as well. Oh, Brassy, I can't believe it. Such a wonderful class. Thank you. Oh, here we go. <laughs> My dude, <beautiful> oh, mom! <laughs> I knew we were... <laughs> Part of me knew we were going to see this emotional side again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh, gosh, Maddie. <sighs> I think that's the only scene where that happens. That's unfortunate. <laughs> it's funny to see him like that. Aw, oh, man, imagine if I did that with the weird, like, orbital effect on my voice mod. <laughs> oh, no. You know, hang on, I'm gonna pull that up real quick, just for demonstration purpose. Oh no. I wanna hear it. <laughs> this might take a moment. I was afraid you were going to pull the Lumiere bit, too. <laughs> oh, gosh. Hmm. Oh, man. This is horrible! <laughs> the great monster's infestation must end! It's a little bit loud. <laughs> I'm not even that close to my microphone. <laughs> I, I was worried if... I'll be honest, Chris. I was worried I might need to call Daniel. <laughs> oh, that would have been bad. If that uh, 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 um, uh, and this, ladies and gentlemen, was a segment in which we're Black Cross 
literally almost died. <laughs> oh. The day that Black Cross died. Uh, oh, I truly felt lightheaded there. Oh, gosh. Don't Hello, out. class. It is I, Hassel, yet again. Uh. First, allow me to apologize for losing my composure during our last class. <laughs> <laughs> I was so touched by Brassie's story that I simply couldn't help but contain my emotions. My apologies for making such a scene. <laughs> I certainly got her very stern talking to from Miss Ty after class. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Let us shift gears and dive into the material from today's class. I am now just picturing, like, Hassel and Time in the same room together, and, like, like Time's doing that one thing that Edna from The Incredibles did to Helen. It's like, PULL YOURSELF TOGETHER! <laughs> Point she has to scold her. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, oh lord. Now, have any of you heard of the ten sites of Paldea? <laughs> As the name would imply, they are ten sites in the region of Paldea that are considered particularly beautiful. Among them, I would say that the Grand Olive Orchard is likely the most accessible. You can see field after field of olive trees from the hill on the way to Cortando. Two waterfalls that have also been counted among these ten sites are the Fury Falls and the Casaroya Falls. Then there's the peak of Glaciado Mountain, known as the highest peak of Paldea. There's another cliff on the Glaciado Mountain that's named after its rather unique shape. So let me ask you, my students. What is the name of the three-pronged cliff on Glaciado Mountain? No need to grasp its straws. Uh... I believe it's the grasp. Ah. Exactly! It looks like a hand It looks like a hand taking hold of something, doesn't it, Black Cross? The three-pronged cliff on Glaciado Mountain is in fact called Glaciado's Grasp. Though its shape is far too stubby to be that of the human hand. I imagine someone thought that it looked like that of a Pokemon hand grabbing something. I have also asked the area, of, I mean the mountains of Area Three in East Providence, where you could get a good, good look at it, at Lavincia, and it's particularly gorgeous at night. In fact, the view is so brilliant it is known as Million Volt Skyline. I hear it's quite the hotspot for dates, and deservedly so for having such a romantic view. I imagine it's... What do the kids say these days? Ahem. A very fleek selfie spot. <laughs> Never use that phrase again, my friend. This does not beseech you well. I am sorry, I'm not too familiar with the Instatox and TikTubes. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. Of course, you may feel that not all ten sites live up to the grandiose names that they have. How often do we visit some tourist spot only to be disappointed? 
Not to say that we shouldn't visit them, only that you should keep your hopes in check. The important thing is to go yourself and see them with your very own two eyes. That is insensitive to those who have black eyes. <laughs> eye patches. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes a disappointing experience can st still be a worthwhile trip in its own way. Take a chance. Well, that's it for today, class. Thank you for your attention. Great, now I'm beginning to feel like I have to sneeze. <laughs> uh, this doesn't bowl well by the time we finally do sneeze. It's gonna hurt. Hello, class. It is I, Hassel, yet again. My, my, how time flies, as they say. Indeed, our time together has certainly flown by. It's hard to believe that this is our last class together. Now, our topics for today may feel somewhat unrelated to art. But there is absolutely no set destination as to what art should be. Therefore, let us carry out the discussion and see where it takes us. There are two things I wish to focus today on. Ribbons and marks. Both are special honors that capture a Pokemon's qualities. There will be times when your Pokemon gives maximum effort or has a noteworthy experience. In recognition of its feats and accomplishments, it can be given a ribbon. To give an example, if you manage to become incredibly close to a Pokemon, it may be granted the Best Friends Ribbon. Incidentally, if there is a person in Cas- There is a person in Cascarafa who can give your Pokemon the Best Friends Ribbon. Marks, on the other hand, are mostly found on wild Pokemon when you meet them for the first time. They can symbolize a character of a Pokemon, such as the Rowdy Mark or the Vega Mark. It's completely up to luck whether you run into a Pokemon with these marks. So, if you're able to catch a Pokemon with a mark, rejoice at your astounding fortune! Does anyone know what special thing you can do with the Pokemon that have ribbons or marks? Let's see. Show them off. How about and say? change their title. Well, yes, indeed, you can show them off, but certainly there's n that's not to the extent your interest, is it? The correct answer is that Pokemon with ribbons and marks can be given titles. What's more is that when they are sent into battle, displaying a title of your choosing. For example, if you send out a Gibble with the Best Friends Ribbon by declaring, Go, Gibble, the best, the great friend. And while I know that marks are generally found already on Pokemon when you meet them for the first time, it seems that more recently Pokemon can be awarded certain marks based on their efforts. These are such as the Gourmand Mark, the Item Finder Mark, the Partner Mark, and so on. Perhaps it might be fun to try out how to get each mark using its name as a clue. Well, that wraps up our last class. Next is the final exam. Please review our material closely so that you pass on your first try. Alright, final exam time.
I do hope you are all ready, because it is time for your final exam. Focus and do your best. And begin. Alright, let's see. Treasure, treasure eatery. eatery. Surrendering some flora. Two. Te uh, <laughs> I meant to say two, but I got tongue-tied. Yeah. Lavincia. False. Yeah, that's false. Tides up! That is it for today's test. Pencils down, please. Thank you all so much for learning about art with me. The time we shared is at the mark that I will treasure, I promise you. It is my sincere wish that you all go on to even greater, more prosperous futures. And that's that. Good work, everyone. You can receive your results at the front desk. Looking around for these doodle blocks in tandem with voicing that was starting to make my head dizzy. <laughs> I think after this, we'll probably call it for the stream. Because <laughs> who lord am I? Yeah. And we still haven't even gotten all of them. I know. We still got like three more. Uh, so how many do we have? I'll take care of the battle studies and uh, home mac. And then you, uh... You, uh... Actually, I'll let you have the home mac. I'll take care of languages. Okay. We'll probably do that another time, though, because who lord mighty... Uh, we've oh, already... Oh, boy! Yeah. We'll do that. That was a trip. <laughs> if we wasn't dying of laughter, we were trying to struggle thinking at the same time. <laughs> Looks like I have to go now. Uh, <laughs> see you, Millie. All right, see you. It was fun, though. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, we're going to go ahead and sign off for the day, but thank you so much for those watching, and we will see you next week. We certainly successfully... Hopefully. We successfully was able to stream both uh, days this week, so next week, hopefully, we'll have a continuation. So, until then, we'll see you next time. This is all of us signing off for the day. Bye. Catch you guys later. And remember, God made you special, and he loves you very much. <laughs> Uh, see you next time.